Let's take a look at how heat works inside of Blender. This is something of a bit of a surprise for me because I hadn't quite expected that it can do this. So we can bring in heat animations directly in Blender, but as an added bonus, we can then go and retarget them to pretty much any biped character right inside Blender with no additional tools. This is a completely free service, so you don't have to be a premium subscriber to make use of this exciting feature. And that means you can apply animations from Heat directly on Genesis 1, 2, 3 characters. You can use arbitrary bipeds like Stacy or Clang from 3D Universe and pretty much any other humanoid biped figure that you can find that Heat can retarget animations to. Let's check it out and see how this works. The first thing you'll need to do is head over to heat.tech in your favorite browser and sign in. If you don't have an account, you can create one for free. And once you log in, you get to this page here, which is the home page. At the very top here, you can download the plugin. And once you do that, you get a zip file that contains everything that you need. Maybe this one, heat-bridge.zip. Right click on that and select extract all. And then you get a folder like this one, heat-bridge. In it, you'll find everything that you need. So in our case, we don't need the installer here. We need to head over to the plugins folder and then we'll find the heat blender plugin. In here, we'll find another zip file and that's the one that we need to upload to Blender and enable like a regular add-on in Blender 4.1 or as an extension in 4.2. I'm sure you're familiar with that process. Once you've done that and I've already done it, you can go and press the N button and then at the bottom here on the right, you find the heat tools. And this is where all the magic happens. So we don't need to browse for an animation in the standalone bridge. We can do it right from here. You can either click fetch heat animations. This is going to take a moment and it's going to go and fetch all the animations that are available to bring in. And that is quite a lot of them. Or you can go and filter them out. So I'm going to go and search for wave here and then either hit enter or press fetch animations here. And then you'll see everything that contains wave. So let's say the wave, the one that we had in the DAS video, let's go and do that. If I go and select that and click download, what will happen is that the bridge will go and bring in its own heat mannequin. Here he is. And he has bones. He looks gray right now. If I press play, then we can go and say, woohoo, there we go. Perfect. But there's a couple of interesting things that I wanted to bring to your attention. So first of all, I have my regular timeline open that comes as part of the regular Blender layout, but I don't seem to be seeing any keyframe. So what's up with that? And then also we do see uh, no color here. That can be, of course, switched over to the viewport shading. Blender takes a moment to compile the shaders for that. And then we have red guy. There's also bones here. If you don't want to see the bones, like the, the big gray thing, so you can head over to this thing here and deselect the bones, and then you don't see the bones anymore. So uh, one thing that I found quite clever about this is that you don't really want keyframes when you bring in animations. You'd rather probably want to deal with nonlinear animation clips. And that is indeed what has been delivered here. So this hasn't been turned into keyframes. So in order to see uh, animation and how long it is, you have to switch this little icon over here from whoops from timeline oh come on from timeline over to the nonlinear animation and then you'll see that my animation ends sort of here i suppose at frame 97 98 and this is where the keyframes are if you click this icon then it turns this nonlinear animation into an action strip and then you can go and blend it in with other animations so quite convenient quite clever that they have thought of that so that's a regular animation on the regular mannequin here. So I think I'm going to make my animation about 100 or let's say 80, 98 frames. I think I could probably do with this as well as another window here, which I'm going to turn into the regular timeline. So now I have full control over how long this is going to be. So let's say end is, let's say, 99 here. Uh, 90 and 90, 98 here, perhaps 98. There we go. And now I can, I've got best of both worlds. I've got the non linear animation stuff and I've got the timeline stuff here. If you fancy more of a visual representation, you can use the standalone heat bridge to send animations from this interface over into Blender, much like I've shown you in the DAS episode. The connection happens from here, not from within Blender. So when you open it and when you log into it for the first time, you will see this option down here, Blender, but nothing else. So there's no 
import or export button over here. So to connect this to Blender, you gotta go and just click on this drop down menu and then just select Blender. And then that will actually connect this bridge with the Blender interface. And now I see several icons here. The second one of which is if you wanted to export an animation from here with skeleton into Blender. And the first one is if you wanted to export an animation onto a selected skeleton inside the interface. Let's test both of these out. Let's go and use the second icon here. And if you hover, it says export new T69H model. And that is what we want. Let's type in something like standing here and find maybe the standing one animation. When you click on it, that's your visual representation. You get a bit of a preview of what this animation looks like. And now you hit import. And now inside Blender, you'll see this download bar happening and also the guy and the animation loading into the scene. Press play or use the space bar and then that's your guy you know, standing around there. And likewise, if you wanted to bring in an animation and apply it to the skeleton in the viewport, make sure you don't select the mesh, but select the bones of the mesh, which is then selecting the armature here. So once again, we'll bring in our interface here and we'll say something like wave. Let's use the wave over one more time, select that, and then go and select the first icon here, which now goes and says export to selected. That's what we wanna do, hit import. And it doesn't matter where your playhead is in the timeline, it'll always be applied to the beginning of the timeline and gets rid of anything that was there before. So there we go, this is my guy now waving over. There we go, hello there, that's how that works. So if I wanted to go and retarget this to an arbitrary character, let me show you how that works because that's just something I didn't know this could be done. So I'm gonna use somebody like Darius here. This is a Genesis 2 figure and I'll show you some other figures uh, in a moment because it's, it's fairly difficult to retarget for Genesis 2, but it's really, really easy for this plugin. So all I'm gonna do is head over to File, Import, FBX, and then I've got some random figures here, all of them FBX figures, Genesis 1, Clank and Stacy, they're completely arbitrary figures. So I'm gonna go and use Darius 6, just hit import FBX, and there he is. Shaders are being compiled, GX, shift him over to the side a bit, and let me show you where the, where the magic happens. So if I go and close the Heat Tools browser down here, and also close down the Heat Tools armature here, and just go to Heat Retargeting down here, I can pick a source and a target armature, either with the eyedropper icon or just like click in here and then I'll say armature. That is actually the heat armature here. You can rename that if you like. And the target is gonna be my Genesis True Male. And if I do that, I can build the bone list. So single click to build the bone list. Heat now knows how the bipad is made up and we don't have to concern ourselves with that. All we need to do is click the retarget animation button, which will then retarget the current animation to our target skeleton. This takes literally a couple of seconds and then Darius moves just like the heat skeleton. Isn't that amazing? I thought that was pretty exciting. I really didn't think that was possible. Uh, this also works with other figures. So let me go and remove Darius here because you know, this is, I can't show you this often enough. If I go and get rid of Darius, import something like the 3D Universe Clank little robot here from back in the day. This is a completely arbitrary skeleton now and it's not related to Genesis at all. In that case, once again, under heat retargeting, I can go and clear my target skeleton out, pick Clank, build the bone list, click retarget animation, and then Clank can do the wave. Is that amazing or what? That is pretty cool. And of course, from now you can go and tie them together as animation strips and build the animations that you need, export them out again as an FBX, as an animation sequence and use them however you like. So that is, that is pretty neat. If you do want to have other animations, all you need to do is select the heat skeleton again, not actually the mesh let me go and switch bones on again. You've got to select the bones here so that the armature is selected. Head over back into the Heat Tools browser and find something else, like maybe walk, perhaps like the silly walk, and just go click download. And that brings up this little red box here that downloads the animation that applies it directly onto our mannequin. If I go press play, then I can see this is the silly walk. Very nice. And Clank is still doing his original animation and also this silly walk is actually much longer than the previous animation. So let's go and make that 230 sort of three here, 233, let's do that. And give Clank also the silly walk 
easiest thing to do go back to the beginning of the animation on the very bottom we've already got the skeletons retargeted just click on retarget animation and it's a bit longer it takes a tiny bit longer i mean we're talking half a second and now clank can also do the silly walk is that cool or what so there's a lot of other things that I haven't even explored yet, but this one was the one that I thought I really wanted to share with you because this is something that, uh, I mean, I'm used to retargeting animations in Unreal Engine and that isn't this easy. Saw skeleton, target skeleton, click retarget animation and you've got it. And of course you can make changes to that like I've shown you in Das Studio, similar process here in Blender. And this is something that you can do for free. If you do decide to support the Heat Team, which I strongly suggest you do because this is this is dynamite stuff, $5 a month gets you access to thousands of animations and many, many more coming. I thought this was newsworthy. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have fun with animations, have fun with Blender and Das Studio and anything else. I'm gonna make another the video of how to use heat animations directly in Unreal Engine. That is also pretty cool. And UEFN. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.